Hello, everybody. How are you tonight? How's things going? My name is Laney Shaughnessy. I'm going to be your host this evening. Hope you're all doing well. Let's make sure that. All right, all right. We I'm popped in a little bit early. We got a little bit of time before we get really, really rolling. Uh, let's see here. All right, Bruce got out of the shop. How's everybody going? Darwin, Gene, Big Easy, Roger Brown, Troy, what's happening? Uh, David, Kevin, T Button, what's up? All right. Testing one, two, three. Hopefully y'all can hear me. Again. Okay. Hey, Jeff. All right, as always, uh, if you have any questions tonight, make sure you throw a couple of question marks in front of the actual question that you're typing. That way I can visually catch it quickly in the chat and uh, I, can, I can extract those questions, you know, to uh, answer them and things. Um, unfortunately, uh, I lost a, uh, our family lost a family member. Um, I believe it was low been now last week week and a half um and uh my mom's younger sister my aunt and um uh she was cremated the family uh, her wishes were to be cremated and it's my responsibility to i make the urns for our family members who are uh not buried who are cremated and uh so i actually have to uh design her urn and i was already going to have it made and everything and I went out to the shop this weekend and uh, the belt on my table saw decided to deteriorate into nothing so I had to order a new one and um, uh, so I thought well I have a class Tuesday night uh, I'll just do a design in class because uh, it's going to have a lot of different elements uh, we will be working in Vetric Aspire tonight um, most of the stuff that I'm doing can be done in Vetric VCarve Desktop Pro and Aspire, uh, but I am going to actually be doing some modeling. Uh, I'm going to be working with models that I've purchased online. Uh, the theme of the urn is going to be butterflies. Uh, she likes butterflies. Um, so uh, I did purchase some models, uh, but I'm going to be creating some trim models and things uh, for the design. Uh, so I will be working in Aspire, and those aspects will require the features of Aspire to be able to do. Um, they could be done in Desktop or Pro as a molding toolpath for the most part, um, but uh, that creates just a toolpath for the molding, and I actually want to create a molding piece. And so uh, with that being said... Uh, we should be able to just get right going. Yeah, we should be able to get going. All right, uh, I am on, let's see what channel I'm on here. Channel three, there we go. And let's get me down in the bottom Bottom, testing one, two, three. Make sure you guys and girls can hear me well. Uh, but uh, let's get me down in the bottom left down here. Hello, I'm down here. Okay. Awesome. If you can't hear me, let me know and I will uh, turn up my audio. Uh, if everything is fine, great. Let me know that as well too. Okay. First off, let's talk about if any of you ever... Uh, would have to make an urn for 
uh, human remains for a favorite pet, you know, pet remains or anything like that. Those are, uh, you know, quite popular as well too. You want to make sure that the size of the urn uh, is large enough uh, that uh, the ashes can be, uh, you know, held in. So you want to make sure that the cubic inches, the inside of the urn, uh, there's enough room for the, the remains. Um, basically, on average, it averages out to one pound of body weight is equivalent to one cubic inch of remains. Now, that will vary uh, based on circumstances such as bone mass and things like that. Um, it could be slightly more or slightly less. But essentially, um, let's say that, uh, uh, you know, um, I'm 187. That would be about 187 cubic inches. Now, adult human cremation urns are typically uh, built at a minimum of 200 cubic inches. Uh, the uh, CANA, uh, the Cremation Association of North America, that's a standard. Uh, and then they would just go up from there. So the minimum size is generally 200 cubic inches. Um, to determine basically it's, it's, it's uh, uh, inch to the third power, if you will, or inch times three. Uh, and it's uh, basic, basically the length times the width times the height uh, to get your inner cubic inch area to calculate cubic inches. And, um, and then again, one pound of body weight is equivalent to one cubic inch of remains. So if I had to uh, do an example, uh, let me break out the... Uh, calculator here on the screen um, the box that I'm gonna be making uh, the outside dimensions the outer dimensions are nine and a half by seven nine and a half long by seven wide by five inches tall that's the box now I'm going to because the box is gonna be a mitered box I'm going to be in, in the, the wall thickness, the material thickness is going to be three quarters of an inch. Um, and they're going to be mitered. I'm going to be deducting off of the length, the outside length, long point to long point, uh, that nine and a half inches. I'm going to be taking three quarters of an inch off each side, uh, which would make my inner box dimensions eight in length. 7 minus the inch and a half is going to be 5 and a half inches in the width, and the 5 inch height is going to remain. So if I did 8 by 5.5 by 5, that would give me 220 cubic inches of volume, of area, of room, okay, of area of things. And um, the, uh, my aunt, her height, five foot two inches. Uh, and when she passed, she was lost a very, a lot of, a lot of weight and she was only 89.2 pounds. Um, so 98.2 pounds, sorry, 98.2 pounds. So just under a hundred pounds in body weight. And, uh, for that, that's only about 92 cubic inches of remains. So there's going to still be, in, in my 220 cubic inch box, there's going to be plenty of room. I'm, I'm not going to run into the issue of not having enough room or the remains not fitting. So uh, what I've got set up in Vetric here is, um, in Vetric, I'm doing a single-sided job. Uh, we're going to have multiple sheets set up, so I'll be setting up multiple sheets here in just a minute. But right now, the, the long sides, uh, I'm going with 11 inches. I'll cut them down. I, I like to, on my rough board that's going to go on the table when it does the carvings or laser engravings or whatever, I'm going to do a combination of a bunch of stuff. Um, I want some room to play. I'm going to be 
carving in the middle so that way when I miter off the ends the waste will be will fall off the ends so I'm gonna go with 11 inches uh, by 5 inches in height that's not gonna change so 5 inches in height uh, by 3 quarters of an inch thick and that's gonna be my job size and um, and uh, the uh, job for this I'm gonna be uh, using my quick set block so I'll be touching off on the material surface and I'll be starting in the bottom left corner. Now, I'm going to be creating models and everything. So what I want to do on this job is actually I'm going to cancel out of this. And I want to hold down my shift key. I want to close this. I want to go file, close. And I want to actually hold down my shift key when I click on create a new file. So that way when I set this up, I have some extra options here. I know I'm going to be building models and working with models and stuff. And... Uh, uh, so I want to increase the number of pixels in my 3D view uh, so that I, I, the quality of my cut is improved uh, on my 3D models. So I want to go to an extremely high, which is uh, about 8 million pixels. Uh, I don't need to go to maximum. I'm not creating any models that uh, I'd be selling or anything like that. Uh, so extremely high uh, is going to be good for um, keeping a low pixel rate on my uh, pixelation on my models because that pixelation if I'm working in a you know a standard or a higher a very high resolution which are 1 million 2 million and 4 million pixels um, any pixelation that would appear in my model that does translate over to the quality of the finished cut so uh, just some FYI information so I want to be an extremely high which is eight man pixels, uh, and uh, I'm gonna click OK. Cool. <clears throat> now, I am gonna be working with multiple sheets, and uh, to give you a general idea of a basic layout, uh, let me import an image. I'll import a couple of images. Uh, let's see here. Let's do one more. Okay. So on the, let's take this one and move it out of the way for a minute. The basic style of the urn that I'm going to go with, uh, it's going to have a little bit more decoration than this. These are just the plain box kind of layouts. Uh, but it's going to be a mitered box. Uh, there will be a base. And uh, there will be a base. And there will be a lid. And the base will have a slight overhang because it will have a decorative uh, profile uh, um, uh, milled into it. And uh, the lid will have a slight overhang as well. Uh, and uh, But this similar kind of style. Um, as far as what the general box is going to look like. I'm going to be adding some embellishments and some trim to it and everything to dress it up, but this is a basic concept. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm not doing any raised panels or anything like that, but uh, uh, basic concept. <clears throat> so that being said, I'm going to go ahead and lay out my sheets first. I'm going to get those out of the way and stuff. And if my outside dimensions are nine and a half by seven, okay, nine and a half by seven, then I need to, I, I want to know how much overhang I want on that top and that bottom, you know, for my roundovers and everything. And um, I'm just going to do a small profile and all. So I'm going to... Um, I'm going to go with a um, a half inch half inch overhang on each side. So that'll be adding an inch to the length and the width. So one of my sheets, uh, two of my sheets, my top and my bottom, um, I'm going to add in. I'm going to rename this first. This is going to be my long side. 
I could I could uh, call it front and back and all that, but I'm just going to go long side, short side, um, and uh, and everything. Um, short side. Gonna have uh, the top and the base. All right, now <clears throat> for the base, I'm gonna edit this uh, in here and I'm basically, like I said, I'm just gonna add an inch all the way around. So it's gonna be a 12 by, that's my height. This is my base, 12 by seven plus one, eight, 12 by eight my base okay and click OK on that my lid my top same thing 12 by 8 no nine and a half ten and a half ten and a half hold on I mean about about screwed myself up there ten and a half on the length 10 and a half by eight almost screwed up and that's going to be the same thing for the top i'm just going to do a half inch overhang from the box uh so 10 and a half by eight yeah And my short side, it's going to be five inches tall. Uh, and it has a um, seven inches. And again, I'm going to be mitering off, you know, off the ends and everything. So I'm going to give myself uh, seven, eight, nine. I'll just go nine inches. Nope. Wrong length, wrong length, sorry, five. Up here is nine. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so I basically have my base, my top, my long side, and my short side, and of course the long side and the short side, there'll be two of each, but I'm just gonna create layers. So uh, I'm just gonna create layers and everything. Uh, thank you, Troy. I appreciate that. Um, and uh, let's take a minute and say, uh, if you could, I would appreciate you turning up the volume as I am hard of hearing. Thank you, Gene. Okay, no problem. Uh, we can do that. Testing one, two. Let me know if, uh, if I get distorted anyway. Um, I don't want to go up too high. I don't want to distort too much, get into the red zone. But uh, Gene, testing one, two, let me know how that does for you. <clears throat> okay. All right. So, and uh, the, uh, and also uh, uh, Gene and guys and girls, uh, you, you also have volume on your computer that you can turn up if you need to as well. Okay, and let me know if I get distorted or anything, uh, let me know. All right, let's start with uh, the top for a moment. Uh, I'm gonna double click on that to make that active and everything because I have a model that I'm gonna be bringing in for the top. I have a model that I'm gonna be bringing in uh, and uh, so let's do that. And it's gonna be a model that I purchased. I purchased it off of um, eBay, I, uh, not eBay, Etsy, Etsy. So I'm going to go into modeling and I'm gonna import a component, a 3D model. <laughs> and I have four different designs and the designs, let's see if I can kind of scroll through the images. <clears throat> I have this butterfly that's one. 
I have this one. I have this one. And I have this one. Okay, and that's kind of side views of them. So I bought this four pack here. Cost me $9, $9, $9, something like that. Uh, but let's see here, uh, for my top, I believe I am going to go with, um, kind of kind of go with a traditional monarch looking butterfly which I believe would be more so this top left one. So, that being said, that's going to be uh, P321-1. So, we'll take that and we're going to click open. And in the import 3D model slash transformation window, uh, sometimes models might come in, uh, they, they may come in sideways, they might come in upside down and things. And so we have to orientate it correctly, right? So um, I would be in the top view is what we want to be in. Uh, oh, okay, Eric. There you go. Good, that's the first one. Um, so the top view is what I wanna be in. And then I want to uh, get it centered. And right now it's kind of in metric, if you will. Uh, and uh, so I'm gonna scale millimeters to inches. Okay. And right now it's coming in at uh, roughly 14 by 19. And as we know, my top is um, uh, 10 and a half by eight, right? So on my long side here, I'm gonna go, I just want it to fit in there, right? So I'm gonna go six and click apply. Sorry, I didn't realize I had a ringer on still. Okay, give me just a second. Uh, we had a Planet CNC crash, uh, and uh, people are um, just experiencing that. Um, I'm in a training class. Uh, I won't be available until after the class ends in a few hours. I can call you then. All right. So... I've got it sized down. I, I decided to go uh, about six. Uh, that brings it, the aspect ratio brings it down to about four and three eighths, uh, 4.36. Uh, center that model. And then I want to position and import. That's next, right? So I want to go to that screen next. Now, when we look at this, our blue, if, if let me just uh, show you here. When you see kind of a faded blue, let me zoom in, really zoom into this. That means the model is below the zero plane. And when you see a kind of a light blue, this bright blue, that is above the zero plane. Now, if I turn this up on its X here, I believe it's the X. Yeah. Uh, we can see the position of the model and we can see this black line right here along the bottom. By default, generally your model, when you center it, when you click the button to center the model, your model is centered in there. And if that's a two-sided job, great. That's what you want. You want one half on one side, one half on the other side, so that when you carve and flip the board over and carve, you're good. This is a one-sided model, so I need the model above the zero plane. So this slide bar slides and moves the zero plane up and down, and I want to slide the zero plane all the way to the bottom which will have the model on top of it, okay? Because it's gonna be on, on one side of the board. And I wanna discard anything below the zero plane. And this is a good use, uh, this discard anything below the zero plane. If my model was too thick, if, if, if the modeler created the model with too much base meat, 
you know, you have your shape, height, the detail of the model, and then you have the base meat underneath, you know, and it, if there's too much of it, we can trim the fat, you know, we can slide that slide bar of that, of that uh, zero plane up a little bit, and then we can check off the box to discard anything below that zero plane. And so when it imports that model, it trims that off and thins it up for us. That way, we are not sacrificing detail. And let me just say this about models for new people and stuff like that. When I have a model in my design and I scale that model size down, whether I scale the X and Y and, and the Z, all the perspective is going to change as well, X, Y, and Z. If I just scale the Z down and flatten it out, well, when it scales down that model thickness to get it to fit into my board, we're going to sacrifice detail. It's going to reduce the amount of detail there's in. So if I have the opportunity to trim the fat of base meat underneath the shape uh, so that when I, to get me closer to my model height that I want, then I'm going to do that. I'd rather do that than flatten everything down just because the modeler put a bunch of base meat underneath and I have to flatten it down to get it to fit into a three quarter inch board. And now there's hardly any detail at all. Rather than do that, I'd rather trim some of that base meat off and then have a reasonable model to size down a little bit more and, and minimize my sacrifice of detail. In this case, my model height is fine, so I don't need to sacrifice anything. So I want it above the zero plane. And I'm going to click import. Hey, Michael Murphy and Debbie, how y'all doing? Hey, Ronnie. <clears throat> All right. And so this is going to be uh, the model that will be in the center of the top of the box of the urn. Now, I have a decision that I need to make. I know that there is going to be a detail, a decorative detail around the edges, a round over an OG cut something. My model, do I want it just sitting on top of the uh, on top of the box or do I want it in a nice dish in the top of the lid here's the difference between the two my model currently right now if I look at the properties of that the base height is 0.3417 the height of the model overall height so about three eighths of an inch my material for my lid is three quarters of an inch. In order to get that butterfly to be able to stand proud like it looks in the screen here, I have to mill that amount of material away from my three quarter inch board so that this is raised up. And that takes my three quarter inch board down to a three eighths inch thick lid. And I'm not sure it wouldn't look bad. I wouldn't want to go less than a half inch on that, but I don't want to, I don't want to lose that material. So what I want to do, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put the butterfly in a dish so that the top of my box has its nice round over edges and then it's going to transition into this nice dish with this beautiful butterfly in the top okay so what that means is i need to first off i want to kind of lay out and kind of get a general idea of what what's ha what's happening with my lid right uh and everything and uh, so I'm going to use some layout lines uh, that will represent the, the, the layout lines. The guidelines are going to represent my box, my nine and a half by seven, right, box. So if I come in, uh, and again, just for clarity, 
uh, my box is 10 and a half, or my lid here, 10 and a half by eight, okay? Okay, uh, so I'm gonna take a guideline and I'm gonna snap it right to the edge here. And then I'm gonna right click on that guideline and I'm gonna create a parallel guide. I'm gonna create a parallel guide. Uh, negative, I'm going down, so negative 0 0.5 inches, a half inch. Okay, cool. And from there, okay, from there, I'm going to create another parallel guide down seven inches. Negative seven. Okay. All right. And I don't need that guideline there anymore. Over here, same thing. I'm going to grab a guideline and snap it to the edge of my board. I'm going to create a relative guide. To the right is a positive number. So I'm just going to go over 0 0.5 inches. And then from this guideline, right click on this guideline to get the properties box, I'm gonna create a relative guide nine and a half inches over. And then I can take this first one and bring it back over here. So this, these guidelines, that's gonna represent, okay, that's gonna represent the outside, the outside perimeter of the box, the sides, front, back, left, and right, you know, the sides. Okay, that's gonna represent the outside perimeter. Okay, outside perimeter. My walls are, this This whole box is, you know, you could go, I could mill the material down and go with uh, half inch walls or three eighths inch walls, it doesn't have to be very thick, but I'm gonna be doing some carvings and trim and everything on these. So they're they're starting off at three quarters, but you'll see when I create the molding trim and everything, they're gonna end up being about a half inch on the upper part, three quarters on the lower. You'll see that in just a minute when we get to the sides. We're, we're gonna get there relatively quickly here. But this represents the outside perimeter and the, um, for me, that's just visual. Uh, if I wanted to, I could create a parallel guide uh, 0.75 inches, uh, you know, and create kind of the inner perimeter, if you will, uh, uh, to represent that. But I don't need I don't need to see that. I just need the outside perimeter. OK, so let me get rid of that one. All right. <clears throat> so currently right now, the butterfly is. Um, centered on that lid, which is good. And so what I want to do is I want to create want to create this dish that's going to happen here. And so we're going to take my Butterfly and size it down. I want to be just inside that dish and everything. And um, the thing that I need to do now is I'm going to split the view so we can see, so we can see the 3D and the 2D view. So let's split the view so you can see both the 2D and the 3D view. Cool beans. Okay, uh, so on here, we're going to create a shape and we're going to be creating a curved profile and the angle, how deep that curve is and all is going to be based on kind of the angle. Uh, I'm going to start off with a uh, 30 degree. That's kind of shallow. Uh, it's going to be a minus a subtraction with no limit and I'm going to click apply. Okay. And I'm actually going to double that. I'm going to go 60 
and click apply. Okay. Now I'm going to close that for a moment. Uh, 60 is a little bit too. Hold on. Let's back that down some. Let's go uh, 45. Click apply. 60 was a bit much. Okay. I'm going to close this. And I'm going to put that component. That component is the base. So I'm going to put it at the bottom of the list. And I want to make sure that the butterfly is in an add mode to that component. I want it to flow with the curve of that, that contour. Okay. Now, to give a little bit of perspective uh, visually and everything, I'm going to add a zero plane to this that will not get used. Uh, it's going to be just for reference purposes only. So you can see, have kind of a visual there. Uh, but it will not, it'll be turned off. It won't be used in any of the tool pathing. Now, currently right now, the uh, top of my butterfly wings are flush with the top of the, uh, the board here. If I go into the material setup over here on the tool pass side, the material setup, we can see that there's an error because my that base meet again of that dish that ha that occurred and my model they exceed my three quarter inch material right so what I need to do is I need to size things down so that they it all fits and let's go back over here and um, in this component we're going to go into the properties here. And I'm going to reduce this down, this dish. Uh, I'm going to reduce this down to 0.625. Okay. And I'm going to, on the butterfly, I'm going to reduce this down to 3 sixteenths. Oops, too many decimal points. Okay. Now, if we look very carefully at the model, we can see that there's a different color of red here than the rest of the model. And on the other tip of the wing as well, the other tip of the wing as well. And that's telling me that those areas are higher than the top of my board. Okay. So I need them to be down below this surface. So I'm going to go... And, and I'm gonna actually going to reduce this down a little bit more. I'm going to go, because there's a lot of detail and everything, a lot of thickness. I'm going to go uh, 0.15. And that should bring me down where I need to be. Okay. Now, in some cases... And everything normally you would want the dish to transition from the top of the material down and everything but in this case I've got this butterfly that I want the tips of the wings or the tops of the wings flush with the top of the board so that's why you see this lip around the edge here where it's coming down it's stepping down and reducing because of that model material and everything so not counting oh 
let's click OK on this. Not counting the edge profile. Here, let me, uh, let's switch there and let's make this bigger so everybody can see. Not counting the edge profile, which will be some kind of OG, Roman OG of some sort uh, that uh, will most likely be done with a hand router or something. Uh, but not counting the profile edge, the top of the lid will have this butterfly. If I wanted to try to narrow it down into more of an oval, I could, but I don't think I'm gonna do that. So that will be the preliminary layout for the lid, not counting the edge profile, which is not being done on the CNC. It could be done on the CNC. I just don't have that bit. I have it in my palm router, which I'll most likely just, it's quicker and easy to just uh, put a nice edge profile on it all the way around. Let's get to the nicer stuff. Not the nicer stuff, that nice too, but the, 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 the side work, the side of the boxes. All right, everybody still with me? Again, if you have questions, put a couple of question marks in front of the questions so I can differentiate them uh, in the um, in the in the chat. Thank you very much. And uh, whoever said, don't forget to say thank you very much, Michael Murphy. All right, so. Uh, Okay, now let's transition to, we go to our sheets and let's go with the long side and then I'll take whatever I created the long side and I'll transfer, I'll copy it over to uh, uh, the short side and then I'll shorten it up to where it fits and everything. Uh, so let's make the long side uh, active and uh, come back to our 2D view. Okay. Now for this, since it's not active right now, I'm going to turn off. I'm not going to delete. I'm going to turn off the grid lines. Um, I'm going to turn those off so I, they're not in my way when I'm working here um, for the time being. All right. Now this is the side. So uh, imagine if you will, this box okay and imagine if you will uh, s s this box basically something like this uh, this is a mitered box made on the CNC and this let's see if uh, let me see if I can get kind of a profile there we go let me let me extend myself up hold on a second da, 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 da. Um, let me bring me back to full screen for the moment. Okay, so on this box here, um, this profile, uh, I'm gonna be doing something similar to that, but down low, uh, I might I might do something over the whole thing, but there's gonna be uh, some, uh, on one or two of the sides, there's gonna be some butterflies and flowers uh, engraved, but also there's gonna be some laser engraving too. Uh, where her name and all stuff is going to be, but I want to do something with an, a, a side profile, if you will, uh, to the uh, to the box, if you will. And so this is where uh, coming in with a spire helps helps me with that. Um, I want to do some type of edge shape, but also I want to do some kind of uh, trim at the bottom. Uh, the box, this is a cardboard box, but there's going to be a base that's going to have a half inch overhang on all four sides, remember? So it's going to be slightly sticking out by a half inch, uh, all four sides and everything. And there's going to be a decorative design all the way around that kind of encompasses around the bottom of it. So uh, that's where I'm going to be drawing down here at the bottom. 
and it's going to here uh, I want to go um, square corners uh, about an inch and a half up from the base okay inch and a half up from the base and with that I'm going to go into node editing mode and I'm going to uh, get rid of this span on this side and this span on this side and that's going to give me my up and lower lines let me uh, <laughs> let me get out of the way there hey look at there uh, let me get out of the way uh, so I just drew a rectangle and then I just node edited when you right click on a line you can delete that span and I deleted the spans on the two sides so I have now I have this line and this line down here. That's going to be my drive rails for this profile. Okay. It's going to be my drive rail for the profile. <clears throat> and now uh, on this profile, there is, uh, let's, let's draw it out. We're going to be looking at it as a side view. Okay. So we're going to be looking at it as a side view. And uh, uh, I'm going to go um, on the width a quarter of an inch, 0.25, because that's, that's the maximum I want this profile. Because in order to create that profile as a 3D model, things have to get milled away around it to make it look like it's, it's, it's not a piece of trim that we're adding on to it, that we're gluing on to it. It's part of the board, right? So I want it to be a quarter of an inch. Uh, by an inch and a half okay and um, now from here I can start to lay out my profile um, what I would like is um, I would like a bead if you will I would like a bead and that bead is uh, let's start at the bottom let me work my way up that bead is going to come around and and then it's going to transition into another uh, area another design here uh, but I want to first hold down the control key I'm just gonna I'm not gonna mirror and all that fancy stuff I'm just gonna hold down the control key and drag it up here so I have these two kind of starting beads and then <clears throat> let's take a line. I'll do a uh, uh, I'll do an arc, and straight across. All right, let's take our scissors and um, that was the wrong line to trim. Oops. Okay, and so this, uh, on this profile, you only do the three lines. We don't need this back line here. So in node editing, I'm going to delete that span on the back. And then I'm going to just drag this over to here just for a placement of it. <clears throat> and let's, uh, let's split the view so you can see this kind of happen in real time. Let's zoom in. All right, so in our modeling tools in Aspire, we're gonna go to the two rail sweep. We're gonna select the bottom rail, shift key, then the top rail. That's gonna be our drive rails. 
We're going to select our profile and we're going to scale the profile with the cross sections okay, and sweep it between the spans. Those two things are going to be checked and uh, it's going to be an add. We're going to click apply. It's going to create that uh, profile there, if you will. Now imagine, if you will, let me turn it like this. I wish I could, if I, uh, if I had uh, some time, I could draw this up in SketchUp so you could kind of get a 3D view of it. But um, this part here, this curved profile is going to, be mitered and everything, it's gonna wrap around the entire lower part of the box size. Okay. All right. All right. And um, now, on my side here, I've got an inch and a half here, and this is a five inch side. Uh, let's close this tool for a minute. I think I clicked apply. We'll find out. Yep, okay, good. Uh, and uh, this, uh, this is a five inch side here. So I've already got an inch and a half here, so that leaves a remaining. I have it just, I can't have it just, I can't have it just, drop off you know uh there right so i've got to kind of now create my uh uh rest of my design so the upper part again i'm going to draw a box up here to kind of encompass that upper part for that three and a half inches. I'm going to go into node editing and delete the span on the left and right side. That's going to give me again those two lines for my drive rails. Okay. And uh, now, here, once again, we're going to go, um, I'm going to go uh, three and a half inches in height, quarter inch wide. And Imagine, if you will, that from this part where it's just flat there, it's like a ledge that it's sitting on. Um, I'm going, we're now kind of continuing on that ledge, right? So here, I'm going to go into node editing and I'm going to pull up a node right about there, I think that looks good. It's just visual at this point. I'm gonna insert a point there. And I'm going to pull this back slightly. Okay. Almost like a chamfer, if you will. And this Let's come up insert a point here. Busy a curve from that chamfer. Gonna have And I have this whole quarter of an inch. I can, the quarter, that quarter, remember there's, it's a three quarter inch thick wall, right? I, I'm only, 
I still have a half inch of meat behind there, right? So I'm only dealing with a quarter of an inch of it. So I don't, that little box isn't all the only room I have. I have that quarter of an inch to work with and everything. So um, what I want I want this to be a straight line, so I need to make sure. I'm going to click on, here's how you straighten out a line. I'm going to click on the node that I want to align to. Shift key, the node I want to align last. And I want to move left and right. That's the X axis. I want to hit the X to pull that node in align with that first node that I clicked, right? And so I want this shape now what I want what, what's extremely important what is important is if I take and draw a regular rectangle again a quarter inch you know a quarter inch wide I want my shape to be inside that I, I want to use that quarter of an inch but I don't want to exceed out past it okay uh, I want to I want to use it, but I don't want to exceed out past it. So I want my chamfer coming in. I need this chamfer to actually come in a little bit more. Let's go back into note editing. I need it to kind of come in a little bit more extreme, if you will. Not that much. Back it up. Right there. I want that chamfer to come in. I want that curve to be right on that quarter of an inch line. You know, as it comes in. Perfect. Now I can get rid of this. All right. Once again, uh, in node editing, get rid of that last or that back straight line. We don't need it. We only need the three sides, top, bottom, and the, the profile. Uh, so delete that span. And let's drag this out to here. All right, let's select our bottom line, our top line last, and go into that two rail sweep tool again. That's going to be our drive rail. Select our profile. We're going to scale the cross section with the whisk. There's no scaling. That that means if that if my two lines, if my two parallel lines weren't parallel, if they shrank or went out or or they widened up, it's saying that you know scale that cross section with those lines. You know make it flow with the lines. That's what that means. Well, we're still going to have it checked even though the lines are straight, right? Uh, and we're going to sweep it between those two spans. So we're going to uh, click apply. Okay. Now bear with me a second. My shape is upside down. <laughs> shape is upside down. See the chamfer? The chamfer is up here at the top. It's not supposed to be there at the top. Uh, it's supposed to be at the bottom down here. I was wondering why that uh, base meat looked like it. Not a bad looking profile. Looks good that way, but I need to switch. Um, so I need to uh, change swap rail order. And then click apply. And that chamfer should come back here. There we go. And then around to the top. Okay. So that's what the box size. Now, mind you, remember, there's, it's three quarter, there's still a half inch of meat that you, you're not seeing. You're only seeing the quarter inch. You're only seeing the quarter inch uh, um, part, the top part. If I were just to add that in visually so you could see it, um, here I'll add it in 
uh, visually so you can see it. Da -da 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 -da. We'll create a flat shape, a uh, half inch, 0 0.5, click apply. That's what the wall will look like. Okay. It'll be the base. We have this profile and then we come into this shape here. And mind you that this is going to be, this is, this shape is going to be all the way around uh, the entire, all four sides. And, um, uh, and now we're going to be, I'm going to be doing some carving and engraving in this. So I need to make sure that it's very important when I create the tool pass, like let's say a V carve tool path or whatever the tool path may be, it's going to be very important, uh, that I, uh, make sure that I check the box to project that tool path onto the 3d model. So it follows those curves. Right, so it flows and follows those curves and stuff. Um, let's see here. Uh, Troy says, couldn't you use the top guide rail from the bottom form as your bottom guide rail for the top form? Sure, yeah. I could have used that same line, Troy. I didn't have to draw a whole separate line, but since I, since I drew a rectangle and got rid of the sides, that line was there, right? So I have... I've got two separate guidelines uh, for both profiles, and that's fine, but I could have used the same one. What Troy was asking is this line here, there are two lines uh, on top of each other, you know, one that was that was used to make this bottom piece, and then one for the top piece. Couldn't I just have used that one line? Yes. The answer is yes. And... Um, Michael Murphy, save time, save time, save time. I think he's saying it's time to save. Um, so save early and save often. So that, uh, that extra meat, which I don't have there anymore right now, uh, cause I didn't click apply, but, uh, that extra meat is going to be there. You know, it's going to be a three quarter inch wall. Right, uh, or half inch, you know, uh, it, it's three quarters of an inch, but then this is this quarter is going to be this shape is going to be carved to create that profile. And by the way, <laughs> if you were creating base trim or something like that, you know, or crown molding or whatever, you could do the same kind of similar thing. I'm just showing you methods, right? I'm just showing you methods. Now, you're going to see on one side, uh, on one of the sides, uh, when I create the layers and everything, you're going to see me add uh, some material in here on one of the sides where there's going to be an engraving and inscription and stuff uh, and everything. Um, and also, you'll see that... Uh, those kind of flat spots uh, occur in everything. Um, totally. But that is what our size is going to look like. And then they'll get mitered and it'll, it'll be a, a mitered box, you know, now this just, this is just one single profile that was created, but uh, this one has kind of a decorative transition kind of in the middle. Never created there. Okay, so now let's. Uh, I want to come in with uh, what, what. Well, what's important? What's very important is that I'm going to take uh, these two models here, and. Um, 
it's going to be not models. What am I doing here? These vectors. Let me turn the models off. I want to copy these over to the short side. I want to copy these vectors over to the short side uh, here as well. And might as well switch over to that sheet for a minute. <clears throat> Bring that active. And uh, to kind of illustrate what Troy was asking, to illustrate what Troy was asking, I'm going to delete this extra line here. I'm going to get rid of that. So we just have the one line. And um, this profile, I'm going to get rid of. And these lines here, bring them into there. And I'm going to rinse and repeat on my modeling. Two rail sweep. We'll start down here. We'll select this rail and this rail as our drive rails. Select this profile and click add or apply, not add, apply. Can that profile be created in VCarve? Mike Peary, uh, that profile could be created but as a using the but not as a model like this you won't see the component visually in your design but you can carve it uh, using the molding toolpath you can create that profile you can create the drive rail you only need a single drive rail not both like we're using single drive rail on that profile and you would calculate the molding toolpath and it would carve that but you won't see it three dimensionally like this until you're previewing the actual toolpath, but uh, it won't be a model. You cannot build a model, a component in VCar Pro or desktop, only Aspire. But you could carve this profile. The profile could be carved using the molding toolpath. You just can't create the components. It's a toolpath. Where what makes that difficult? Just so you know, uh, let me tell you what the difference is. I'm going to be doing an inscription uh, on these sides, and that um, that V carve toolpath has to follow the curve, has to follow the flow. Well, when I calculate the toolpath, I'm going to project it onto the 3D model. Okay, I'm going to project it onto the 3D model. And there's a physical model there for the software to know what to project that toolpath onto. As a molding toolpath, you wouldn't be able to do that. So you'd have to do a workaround. Um, and a workaround would be to carve that profile, but then come in with a pocket toolpath and create a flat. And then... V carve in the flat, you know, if you will. All right, let's move on, uh, create a new component and let's use that same rail uh, that we use down here and then hold the shift key down and up here. That's gonna be our drive rails, our profile. Click apply, I wanna merge it. So it merges with the other one so they blend together and click apply. Okay, and I don't know why it uh, uh, keeps coming up upside down. So I just want to right click on the green node and swap the rail order. And that's the way I selected it. So I should have selected the top rail first and then the bottom rail. Click apply. Get that switched around to what it's properly supposed to look like. Okay, that's going to be my short side. Now, while um, while on the short side, some of the decorative stuff that I want to do and everything, 
might as well bring those files in and, and start kind of uh, playing around with them and dealing with them. So um, let's get into a full on full view here. And I'm going to go into my drawing tab and I'm going to import, import some vectors. And uh, these uh, vectors, uh, they came from freepick, freepik.com. Uh, and uh, this is an artist, uh, Orchard Art. Uh, uh, and it's a free download. It comes as a JPEG or EPS file. Uh, you just have to kind of attribute, attribute if you're using them in videos and all the artists, right? Okay. Now, Here's the kicker with these. Great that it's a vector, don't have to trace any images and things like that, but it's a vector. So all of these little uh, roses and flowers and everything, they come in, I'd have to spend quite a bit of time on this assortment, uh, trimming all these lines and uh, you know what flowers in front of what vine so uh, we talked about this in other classes the last over the last couple of weeks. We talked about sh making something look like it's in front of the other. What do we trim away? What's our boundary and all that stuff? I don't want to deal with that, right? So I'm actually going to undo that import, and I'm going to import the picture version. And I'm going to zoom into it. And I'm going to do a bitmap trace. So I'm going to open up the trace tool. And for now, I only want to trace this top flower here. Wait for it. Stand by. Okay, I want to hold down my mouse and I'm going to draw a selection window around this upper flower. So it creates this kind of virtual box around it. So when I do the trace tool, it's only going to trace what's inside that virtual box. All right, and so um, I want to kind of zoom into this. My threshold is going to be 75 on this. And I experience some buffering here in a minute. It's a big picture. All right, default corner fit. For me, the noise filter, I'm going to turn it up to four and I'm going to click preview. All right, again, I'm going to draw that box around this flower. It went away and do that again. Preview. Beautiful. Apply to lock that in and close to close that tool. And then I'm going to just delete the image. I don't need the image anymore at this point. So I'm just going to delete that image. And I'll be left with this tracing. And ta-da, this tracing is much easier for me to deal with because all those extra lines and all from the vector file, it's great that the, the, the vector file came free with it, the EPS file. Uh, it's awesome, you know, uh, that all, you know, but there's a lot of work to it. There's a lot of work to clean up and everything. 
and it's just as easy for me to trace the image because the software is going to trace it pretty much how it needs to be to carve right so you got to pick your battles and for me it's much easier to uh, deal with this all right let's uh, get this sized to fit appropriately um, and and everything Now I'm going to take this and I want to center it left to right. I'm going to make sure I'm centered on that board. Now I've got some additional vectors I've got to bring into trace. Kind of wanted to build this one up on uh, without you know trying to find an image that had everything. I kind of wanted to build this one up. So um, we'll take that. and trace fading off bring this up to 75 nope sixty five preview apply close Get rid of what I don't want. Group that back together. And there's one more. And Why am I not seeing it? Stand by. <laughs> I'm I'm missing a I'm missing a butterfly. Hold on a second. I'm missing a butterfly. Okay, let's try that again. All right, we're going to zoom in here. I just want this one right here. So we're going to go into the trace bitmap tool, turn the fading off, rinse and repeat, uh, turn this up to 75, draw a box around this one. And default corner fit, preview, apply, close, delete that image and stuff. All right. Now let's drag this over here. Let's drag this one over here. We'll size them appropriately here in just a second. Okay. All right. Now, as a V carve, I'll just show you as a V carve. I am right now on the fence. I'm going to show you both ways as a V carve and as a laser engraving. I think I'm going to V carve this. Um, however, I'm still on the fence on if I'm going to carve or laser engrave it because I have a six watt laser uh, with my digital wood carver. But let's do it as a V carve. All right, no flat depth on this. Uh, 60 degree V bit. Probably might decide to go with a 22 degree V bit on it, but uh, 60 will be fine for now. 
no flat depth or limit. Uh, I want to project it onto the 3D model and I want to calculate that toolpath. Okay. If I'm not getting the depth that I want, then I will probably switch to a 22 degree V-bit and change it up because the narrower the angle of the V-bit, the deeper the cut. Okay. Now, uh, let's create the tool path for the model. Okay. Let's create the, I'm just going to create the, uh, uh, the rough and the finish real quick. So I'm going to use a quarter inch end mill for the rough. I'm going to be using the material as the boundary. The whole material is getting milled. Uh, and uh, I'm going to be doing a Z-level raster with that quarter inch end mill. And I'm going to calculate that toolpath. Okay. That's the 3D rough cut. Material is the boundary with the quarter inch end mill. No boundary offset. Z-level raster or Z-level uh, roughing strategy. And... Um, all right, that's telling me that the cut is shallow, therefore it's it's not really requiring a rough cut. Uh, but I'm going to edit the tool, and I'm going to reduce the pass depth because I do want to have some kind of rough cut. Don't necessarily have to, but uh, I'm. It was saying that that model is only remember it's only a quarter inch that that profile maximum. On the high, the lowest part is you know probably like an eighth or something like that. Uh, so my pass depth wasn't big enough. And you see the quarter inch end mill is only going to be removing that area right there. So the roughing tool path is only going to be removing that area there. Right. So it might not even be worth it. You know, might not even be worth it. But let's do the finish cut. 3D finish cut. And I'm just going to use uh, my eighth inch tapered ball nose. Uh, no boundary offset. Material is the boundary. And as a raster cut, like a printer, back and forth. Calculate that. Yeah, it is pretty. Now, on the end, on one of the ends, um, it was requested that uh, the text of You Are My Sunshine be ins uh, inscribed on it. And that will be inscribed down here on the lower part. So we'll do that next. It's calculating. So give it a moment and we'll move on from there. And then it's going to be time to save again. <clears throat> Just in case there's a crash. <laughs> I had one of my drives. I have uh, eight external uh, SD drives and one mechanical HD driver, you know, the, the old style mechanical hard drive external. And of course, that external drive is my 10 terabyte drive that has a majority of all my files on it. And um, it crashed. I lost, uh, hopefully I didn't lose everything. I got to take it to a computer store to see if they can retrieve anything off of it. But uh, it's not reading anything. It, it started making this funky, you know, the mechanical noise, uh, you know, when it's when it's writing. It started making this funky thing like, like the little needle fell off or something. And I'm like, oh no, that's my biggest, that's my big drive. That's where everything is. All my documents. Um, but I have, I have offsite backup storage too. So I didn't lose everything, but um, 
that's my on-site storage. But my SD drives are amazing. I love I love them. They're fast. Uh, I'm getting away from mechanical drives, I swear. All right, let's preview that uh, visible toolpath. So you can see this shape. I wish I could do an undercut uh, and uh, and all. Uh, I wish I could do an undercut to uh, represent the miter, you know, on there. But okay, all right, and uh, the um, V carving. And uh, I'm gonna probably add some color to that. I do not know uh, what uh, color, oops, not that one. Um, I do not know what color I'm gonna add to it, but for right now, I'll just add black in there just for visual purposes. But, you know, that carving had to follow, let me turn this on the side. That carving had to follow this curve and contour and everything, and that's why we project that 2D toolpath, that V-carve toolpath, which technically it's a 3D toolpath the V-carve is, but that's okay. That's semantics. But that pocket cut, profile cut, V-carve, you know, what have you, we had to project it onto the 3D model so it follows and flows with that curve or contour. You know? So that's gonna now this is this is the short side, so on our sides. And so we'll have uh, these flowers. Uh, it'll most likely be just a mirror image on the other side of this. On the other side, I'm not sure yet. Uh, I've got enough flowers and stuff to do different scenes all the way around, but I like this one. I think it might, you know, might just reminisce on the two ends, not not all the way around on the four sides, but on the two ends. Um, but let's get the lower in here. So, uh, some text. And again, it's going to be an inscription. Yeah, Paul, uh, a NAS system would be great. It's expensive, but it would be great. Um, yeah, I wish I was, I wish I was rocking that level right now, but yeah, <laughs> because I do all my video editing and, and all, all of my videos for the last years for not only Spindle TV, but the training, every training class I do gets a recorded video. So I have all those customer videos and quite a bit. All right. Uh, so, um, I think I'm going to do it in quotes. And um, I want a nice what a nice font. Now it's important. I want it to be centered. I want it to be like, like centered. So I'm going to use my profile here, right? The profile that I have here, I'm going to use that to my advantage. I'm going to take a line and I'm going to snap to the center of that profile and I'm going to draw a center line straight across 90 degrees or zero degrees straight across. So that way I can take my text and snap my text to that center line or I didn't have to snap it and have to drag and snap it I could have just selected it selected that line and then with the alignment tool align up or down to the last selection which is that line right 
in the way I could get it centered there. But I want to make sure it's centered there. And uh, I also want to make sure it's centered left to right. So it's perfectly centered. Okay. All right. Uh, get rid of that line. I don't need it there anymore. That was just for reference, right? Um, and uh, let's V carve that. Project onto the 3D model. Very important because there's a curve to that as well. Okay. And, um, oops. The, uh, just so you can kind of have a general idea. I don't know if I'm going to go, black is a little bit too, you know, extreme on the color. I don't think I'm going to go black. Uh, and also just to let you know, the, uh, this is going to be, the box itself is going to be cherry right now in preview in this preview mode. Uh, I'm working with uh, a material of maple, Canadian maple, just for visual purposes, because it's, it's lighter on the screen and stuff, but it's actually gonna be uh, the uh, material now is gonna be a cherry color uh, for the urn uh, and everything. So, yeah, it's gonna be cherry. So this'll be one of the end pieces here. All right. Yes, Sylvia, it is good. I have uh, offsite, uh, but um, yeah, I couldn't believe that. Just out of nowhere, just and it, it, what it is is, I'm always writing to it when I'm recording videos, when I'm doing trainings, and all the customers' trainings get recorded. They get written right to that drive. And I'm doing a class and I'm like 45 minutes into the hour long session. All of a sudden the noise starts getting louder and louder. This mechanical arm, it's like it was scraping, you know, it was writing and all of a sudden it just started going crazy. And then it just stopped dead. Like, uh oh. And then of course I lost that recording. So that, that one hour session was gone for that customer. And uh, we literally had to start over. I said, all right, we're going to do another hour. Do you have some free time? And so we did another hour session. But uh, yeah, it was brutal. Okay. All right, enough about that. So that's going to be one of our end pieces. And besides the text, the text is going to remain on just that one side. Uh, on the other side, I think uh, this image will be on the other end as well. I'll think about that. I, th I think it is. The text is not. The text is going to only be on one end. Now, speaking of that, let's go over and um, to our sheets and let's go to our long side. Okay. Now, something a little bit different on one of the long sides here. Okay. Um, something a little bit different on one of the long sides. Uh, in the middle here, kind of where it kind of starts to curve in and everything, uh, I'm going to create a platform for uh, my uh, aunt's uh, name and dates and things. So um, let's do that now. Let's split the view so you can see what's happening in real time. Well, let's close this. Uh, let me spin it around this way you should be able to see that pretty decently there we go all right in this area here uh, i'm going to create a platform so what i'm going to do is let's go with a uh, rectangle okay and oh hold on i need to be here <laughs> i'm drawing over there my long side's right there um rectangle and I'm using this as my reference okay of where that platform is going to kind of fall I'm using this as a reference uh, and everything and then I'm just using the piece aligned to center left right to get me where I want to be right and <clears throat> 
Now I'm going to create a shape. Again, this is where Aspire kind of helps me. Uh, in the modeling tool, I'm going to create a shape and it's going to be a flat shape. It's going to be merged, merged with this shape, with this shape here. And my base height is important because I need it to have enough base height that you can actually, that it becomes a platform. Okay. So uh, we're going to merge that in, uh, click apply to build the part. And you can see too much, right? Way too much on the, on the base height. Right now it's got a half inch base height. I don't need that much. Remember, I'm only dealing with that curve is probably only about an eighth of an inch, you know, uh, and stuff. So I'm trying to get this to where it's the best visual here. Um, so my base height only really needs to be, uh, we'll go 0.125. I just need, I want to see the full rectangle as a full, as a whole. Let's click apply. Okay. What I, what I mean by that is I, I need to be able to see that rectangle. So eighth of an inch isn't doing it. Let's go. I'm going to step it up to, uh, three sixteenths, one, eight, seven, five. I'm going to sneak up on You know this and I just want to be able to see almost all four corners that is almost and that's almost uh, let me zoom in oh, I might be happy with that hold on a second I got that that edge I can see clearly that edge I can see clearly Okay, that's going to be good enough. That's going to be good enough. All right, and so <clears throat> uh, always, did I, hold on, did it, oh, it staved. <laughs> I was about to say, always click apply before you hit close. Okay, uh, now, text box. And on my text box, I'm using the auto uh, text layout, and I'm using this rectangle that I used uh, as a uh, to help me with the size, so that it sizes the text appropriately, so everything fits. So everything fits, you know. And uh, so um, let's. Uh, Find the appropriate font first. Okay, so we're gonna go normal margins and uh, um, bear with me just one second folks All right, bear with me. All right, we're back. I had to uh, get some information. Okay. 
and uh, I'm trying to decide if periods or dashes, I think periods. Give me just a moment, folks. Uh, Big Easy, are you still in the chat area? Uh, periods or dashes? Eric, periods or dashes? Uh, I'll do I'll put dashes on the letter that you can see the difference between the two Yeah, all right Eric if you're still in the chat, I don't know if you are or not periods or dashes So the periods Huh? No. Like that. And anybody else can throw in your opinion as well, too. But uh, I kind of. All right, let me. Let me create the tool path and see what that looks like. Okay. All right. So project onto 3D model, calculate. Um, continue. And let's create the 3D rough. Cut. Yeah, the month spelled out and everything. I'm just trying to, uh, Trying to uh, keep it. Okay, what you saw there on that toolpath that was just created. The model, when I created that little box, that little uh, platform, if you will, um, it shoved the model down at the bottom of the material. And uh, um, I had to make sure that I went into that material setup and made sure that the model, the light tan area here, is at the top. It was at the bottom, and we need to move it back up to the top. Okay. All right, and uh, the 3D finish cut, same thing. I'll uh, I'll have a conference with the family uh, before I do any final decisions on the text, the dates, the fonts, and and everything. This is just the the main design, uh, but uh, we'll uh, we'll get all those details worked out. All right, so it's calculating the finish cut right now. 
Uh, again, I'm just using an eighth inch tapered ball nose. There's not a lot of uh, detail in this uh, and everything. And the uh, trying to think if um, well, I'll talk with the family as well too if there's any additional inscription that would be on it uh, here, um, something along the lines of. Uh, um, uh, loving mother, daughter, sister kind of thing. Um, we'll talk and see if there's any any additional details that need to be put in. I do want to add some detail to the side here. Uh, nothing as extravagant as the ends with those flowers and the butterfly, but something, some kind of little detail. Um, and so we'll look at that here in just a second. That's an option too as well, um, Eric, uh, instead of a dash, the little uh, wave symbol. We'll look at that also. I will create, uh, I'll create uh, three different samples and then we can choose which sample And by the way, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the reason why I'm asking uh, Big Easy, uh, Eric, uh, uh, Eric um, is uh, Marsha's son. Uh, Marsha was his mother. And he's uh, in the chat with us. All right, so let's take a look at... Um, They cut. <clears throat> Bruce, is that what that symbol is called? A tilde? Tilde? Tiled? Tiled? It's going through the uh, final cut now. All right, uh, let's stop that. Uh, that three D or that V carving needed to be recalculated, uh, and I forgot to do that. So let's uh, reset that preview and preview that again. That was still, remember when I said that model got moved to the bottom of the material in the material setup? Well, that toolpath was calculated for it when it was down there, and that's why it buried that bit just now in that preview. Um, Mary Beth? Yes. Could I get you to... You can't. Thanks. All right. And so again, I uh, don't, I don't know if I'm going to go with the black, um, and, uh, and all, but this is just for visual purposes. So that's that in that side profile, we have that platform where her name will be. Now what I would, what I'm thinking of is what I'm thinking of is is if I want to leave it with the two deck with the with the top that has the butterfly um, the two sides or the two ends uh, that have that decorative floral uh, one end has an inscription on it uh, to keep the sides clean and clear 
or to uh, possibly add in I don't even know if I have a reasonable um, example. All right, I keep burying the image. Bear with me just a second here. <clears throat> That image is arguing with me right now. There we go. Get off there. And I can delete this one. All right, let's see here. Let's see if I can, let's see if I can make myself want this. What I was planning, you'll see here in just a second, I'll show you. Uh, let's trace this image. Tricky, tricky. All right, let me give you a general idea of what I was planning, what I was thinking. All right, one more thing I got to bring in. Bear with me. It's not there. It's not there. Am I missing that one too? Damn it! Hold on a second. I'm missing one more <laughs> image. <laughs> Uh, bear with me folks we'll get her we'll get her correct what flower was that I believe it was that one Sometimes you can go too much, too far with detail and design, and sometimes you can go a little bit more. Um, I do not want to go too far, but what I do want is to find that darn image that I had saved that evidently I didn't save well. Oh, Laney. Prepping for class today, I had an image that would connect these two. And I have I have misplaced it. Give me just a second. Coming back. All right, let's come back over here. 
Uh, ooh, scare me to death. <laughs> There's a screen to my right that's just leaning against the wall and it fell. Scared me. I jumped like a little girl. Um, all right. That's one. Let me grab the other one. That's two. All right, let's do a quick trace. I'm going to actually uh, trace all of these on this side. 75 is my magic number on my threshold. Uh, it varies from, you know, design to design. Uh, but... Um, Okay, now this one. This one I can already say no to. I'm not even going to waste time tracing it. Uh, the quality is low. All right. Now, what I was looking at was originally... ungrouping this and taking this one right here and mirroring it bear with me a second let me flip it flip a copy of it to the left and Slide that one over. And taking some scissors and trimming. To blend that together and then grabbing that get it centered center left to right here we go all right and then taking the scissors let's ungroup this one ungroup ungroup zoom in over here take the scissors and trim away what doesn't belong over on this side Okay, so I was thinking, uh, and bear with me, 
I'm going to go back to the sheets and go to the short side, grabbing this guy and this guy and copying that over to the long side. And then that being the design on the side. Now let's V carve it and take a look at it and see if it's, if it has any appeal to it or not. So I'm going to select uh, the entire design except for that part and uh, V carve toolpath, 60 degree V bit, project onto 3D model and calculate. Okay, so two open vectors are selected. So I have to clean that up. So that's important. I'm gonna hit cancel. I wanna clean that up really quickly. I gotta see where it's open. So select all open vectors. And okay, that's those. Nothing in my flowers at all. So I must have had my profile selected. So let's do that again. Let's make sure that only the uh, only the make sure none of my other line vectors are selected. All right, let's do that one more time. Calculate again. Project onto 3D model because it has that curve to it. Now this says, I want to go to the vector validator. This says there's overlapping lines. I want to find those. I want to clean them up. So uh, I want them to point them out to me and it's, it might be somewhere where I trimmed. So it's important that I clean them up. And what it is, is it's pixels. It's trash. These little figure eights and everything in here, they're trash. They can be deleted. So I'm going to go ahead and just uh, delete those things. And let's see if there are anywhere else. Yep. Over here too. That's just pixels trash, so I'm going to hit delete, select and delete, and let's um, let's see if we have any other issues. Let's go to the vector validator one more time and search that again. Nope, all cleaned up. So now we'll calculate that toolpath. It's important to go back and clean up if you if you have time and stuff and and things. All right, let's take a look at this. So we we're gonna view, we're gonna preview all the toolpaths and this will wrap up the design for the uh, the long side. that leaves the opposite side. Not every side has to have something on it. Okay. Sometimes less is more, uh, you know, keep that in mind, you, you know, um, but, uh, I think that'll be enough. There might be an inscription down at the bottom or something. Okay. Now notice what happened here. Notice that that carving, didn't occur, right? Let's make sure that when we calculate this, okay, that uh, all right, let's take a look and make sure nothing has changed in our material setup. Okay, so our model, when our model's turned off, remember when I said uh, I, I lost the picture, right? So I turned the model off. 
I turned the model off uh, to so I could get those pictures of those vines and everything. I forgot to turn the model back. There's always a reason that something doesn't quite work out, right? So I forgot to turn the model back on so that when I calculated this tool path to project it onto the 3D model, there was no model there for it to, to project to, so I didn't know what to do. So now it's calculated. All right, while that's calculated, let's answer it. Let's see, uh, let's see a, a couple of, uh, uh, let's see if there's any questions here. Um, Next time, I haven't done one or river tables. Okay, you guys are having a conversation about river tables and stuff. Pretty cool. All right. Uh, now, uh, I want to reset this preview and preview all the toolpaths once again. It'll take just a second. And then we should be able to see the final preview. And then... Uh, but uh, I I wanted I I wanted in the design something on both sides of that platform with a connection, you know, with the vines and everything. And um, I knew I wanted to uh, take the same two butterflies and and put them in. Uh, that's why I picked those two because they were universal to where, you know where they uh, stood and everything. All right, and let's um, add some color to that toolpath just for perspective and all. And uh, I'll probably limit the cut so it's not so deep on these parts here. But um, these flowers have a lot of detail in them, and the vine florals, of course, they do not. They're just the uh, you know the silhouettes, so that's why they look so dark. Um, that's why they look so dark and everything. But the concept the concept is plausible. The concept is plausible. All right. Um, okay. So we have uh, basically the, the the base. There's nothing going to be done with the base. Uh, that's that's getting some round over edge again with a palm router or on the router table, not the CNC. Uh, the two sides, the um, the 3D rough and the 3D finish, will be done for two of the sides to complete the two long sides. Um, the V carve will be done on one of the sides, which is the name and the florals. On the two ends, uh, all the tool pass, 3D rough, 3D finish, and the V carve of the flowers, not the V carve of the text, will be done on both ends. And then again, uh, just as a uh, reminder, the top, The top will have this cut with its decorative edge formed on there as well. Okay. So all in all, um, it'll come together when I, as I build it and everything. If there's any design changes, something that would that I I I always make extra pieces. Uh, so that if I do a cut or do something and I'm like, no, good in concept, not in execution, um, where I can make a change, I'll, I, I already have the parts cut where I can swap them out. You know, I give myself one, with, you know, one change and everything. But um, so uh, I believe the one thing that I will probably do to this top is I will probably give it some kind of contour or shape. Um, 
with a not just a round over uh, like a Roman OG uh, in the palm router or something I'll probably do a Roman OG or on, on the router table so it has a nice uh, minor profile edge or something or you know a nice edge and everything but all in all that is the design so once again we have our top here we have our short side um, of our design and uh, just to uh, give you a remembrance preview all the tool paths on that Well, that looks weird, but it's not going to be that way when the model actually gets carved. I have the toolpath. Make sure you get them in the right order, right? That's important. Uh, that'll level it out. There we go. Uh, and again, the inscription will be on just one end, but both ends will have this design here. And then finally, on the long side, we'll have the uh, design on one side, and then the other side will just be the uh, the other side will just be the. Um, the profile that the the, the the b car the three car 3d carving and that's it uh so hopefully something that we did in tonight's class that you you can take away from this whether it be you know uh creating moldings profiles and again uh that profile could be carved with the molding tool path um and uh, uh, in VCarve Desktop or VCarve Pro, uh, working in Aspire allows us to make the component, the actual physical component in everything. And um, so we'll go from there. And that will end us for the evening. All right. So I appreciate each and every one of you sticking with me uh, for tonight's class and the design of this. Um, something I've got to build over the next couple days. My belt, I can't cut the parts for the wood, uh, for the, the, my cherry boards and all until the belt on my table saw, for my table saw comes in. It should be arriving tomorrow. But before I say goodbye, let me make a couple of announcements. Number one, um, I will be in Boonville, New York in a few days. Um, in a few days. Uh, at the New York City Woodsman's Field Day show uh, from August 19th through the 21st. Uh, it's um, uh, in Boonville, New York. I'll be there from the 19th to the 21st. We will have machines there. Uh, if any of your friends are looking for, you know, machines or anything, we'll have the uh, Smart Bench Precision Pro 4x8 uh, uh, made by Yeti. The Digital Woodcarver Smart Bench will be there. Uh, we'll have our 2440s and our mini carvers there. Uh, but I'll be there for uh, the 19th through the 21st. If any of you are in the New York area and plan on going to the Boonville show, stop by the Digital Woodcarver booth and say hi. I'd love to see you. And uh, the um, and second, kind of a kind of a uh, a neat little announcement just for me purposes for me. Um, let's see here. So, uh, uh, what am I trying to say? The uh, da -da -da -da. hold on a second. Um, we are August 9th. So next week, one year ago today, kind of, uh, 
proud of myself. One year ago today is when I started working out. Uh, when I started working out, uh, when I started going to the gym and getting healthy and all, I was a hundred and uh, I started uh, at 154 pounds. I was pushing 154, 155. I was kind of fluctuating between then 154. My goal weight uh, was uh, my goal weight was to uh, build mass uh, and get uh, up to for my I'm 511 on my frame uh, to get up to 185. And uh, as of today, uh, so like I said, next week will be my one year anniversary. But as of today, I'm at 187.6 pounds of you know just mass right so uh yay for me i hit my my goal and uh i've been at it for a year so yeah i'm happy happy about that but uh the uh you know physique doesn't look too bad nowadays still getting it <laughs> but uh yeah so anyway if you're in uh, the new york boonville area uh april i'm sorry august i'm gonna make is the last announcement I'm going to make is um, I'll put it in the chat real quick and then I'll make the announcement. Hold on a second. Uh, summer model cell 22. All right. In the chat area, summer model cell 22. That coupon code right now at the Build It TV website, uh, builditv.com, builditv.com, uh, in the shop. Oh no. Oh no. Hold on. Hold on. Oh no. Okay, I think I'm back. <laughs> Maybe. No. Oh. <clears throat> oh, no. All right, we're back. Uh, we're getting there. I froze a minute. But anyway, my last and final announcement. I'm back. I should be back. My last and final announcement uh, is uh, in the chat area. Summer Model Cell 22 is the coupon code for Build It TV website. Build It TV website. Uh, builditv.com uh, on the shop uh, for every $45 order you get a $10 discount so save $10 uh, on any so basically most of the models are about $15 each so for every three models ordered you get a $10 discount so keep that in mind use the coupon code summer model cell 22 at builditv.com uh, in the shop there's a lot of frames on the website, but there's other flags and animals and clocks and all kinds of uh, patriotic stuff and, and religious stuff and all kinds of awesome models. Go check them out. Scroll through if you got some time and use coupon code SUMMERMODELCELL22. If you spend uh, $45, you'll get a $10 discount on that. All right. Okay. Uh uh, thank you all for the condolences. I uh, greatly appreciate that. Um, it was a hard loss for all of us. Uh, and um, uh, the uh, family's healing together. And uh, so uh, time, it takes time. But we appreciate you. Thank you very much. And until next time, I'll see you soon.